uh, I think that we can start if somebody uh, comes. Uh, yeah, we explain that. Uh, we will see. Uh, okay, uh, my name is Roger. Uh, I work in, in Iskra. I'm front-end developer and I work with, uh, with React and Angular, but I, I know about uh, Python and I work to, to do uh, guillotina and Django, and Django applications. No? Uh, today, uh, I will show you the guillotina React that it's a uh, project that uh, we allow us to manage guillotina data. No? Uh, today, uh, only uh, we see uh, about guillotina React, but uh, com as uh, there are Ramon, that if uh, somebody um, has, uh, I have um, some questions about guillotina, you can ask it uh, to Ramon and, and, and he uh, help us. No? And okay, uh, if you see my my screen, no, it's okay. You see, uh, okay. Uh, if you go to Guillotina Web uh, slash Guillotina React in GitHub, you can find the the repo. Uh, today uh, we follow the get started uh, docs. It's an, uh, a tutorial, no, and we build a simple application to show you that the all power that Guillotina React provides us and, and what uh, we can do with, with the, this library. Uh, <coughs> okay, we are starting, no? The Guillotina React, uh, it's a Guillotina management interface that it provides an interface uh, to access all Guillotina content depending on, on user permissions and allow you to apply action, actions like create, modify, remove content, user interactions like display flash message, etc. No? Uh, all this with flexibility to build uh, in your way. Adding your content with your forms, your icons, and it's built around the idea that it's as a framework, that the layer that uh, could be extended uh, from outside. Uh, to do this, to do this need, we need Python, uh, Node and, and Docker because we uh, installed the guillotina and we start the database with, with Postgres and we need the Docker to, to do this. Ah, okay. Uh, well, uh, I think that we deleted the, the example. Ah, okay. Uh, 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 this application is a, a real example that in Iskra uh, we built and uh, we show you uh, this to, to see uh, what, uh, what things what, uh, we can construct or to build uh, with Guillotina React. I, and tomorrow uh, we explain in, in a talk uh, about this too, no? Uh, tomorrow I explain uh, um, the, this example and a little example that today uh, we built. Uh, first of all, uh, this is an, um, the container view that uh, uh, we uh, see the items uh, saved in, in Guillotina. Uh, Guillotina React provides us to manage this data, no? And see which it items uh, we have in, in container, the properties about the current object that we see, uh, in this case is a container, no? and then we uh, see that the, the title, description, and other uh, properties, and in this case we have the permission stat that allows us to manage uh, permi the object permissions, because uh, only the, these um, permissions is applied uh, to, to the current object. Then if we inside to, <coughs> to the first uh, year content type, uh, here uh, we have more objects, and here we can see uh, their content type. In this case, uh, well, it's artists and managers, uh, press, emails, uh, different types, because this isn't a fair that uh, we do uh, some performance and uh, to manage the artists and managers of this performance, 
uh, we, we can see in, in this, no? And then, for example, in the, an artist, uh, uh, this. An artist example inside the artist, uh, we have some proposals, some accreditations about this artist, and here uh, we, we could create a new items. And depends on that, the content type uh, have defined it, uh, you can choose uh, which, which type uh, we, can, we can build. No? Uh, here, so uh, there are some actions, in this case, only. Uh, allows to delete the object, but we can add whatever we, you, uh, we want to, to do this, no? And then if we want, uh, we can add some tabs or delete it and change the permissions, depends the user that uh, they see to, uh, they have to view or not view uh, these tabs. And this more or less is on uh, the guillotine React, but guillotine React, uh, provide us a guillotine component, a guillotine client that allows us to, to connect uh, any page to guillotine. Uh, we can get, um, well, in this case it's search, no? Search uh, all objects in guillotine and then we can uh, apply some filters, um, uh, sort the, the rows. And create and do uh, more actions like in this case download Excel or send send emails. In this case, in only that in this proposal, then uh, we see this. No, and more or less, uh, uh, would be that the the an example uh, that we built in in Iskra with Guillotine React. Uh, then if uh, we come back to tutorial tutorial. First of all, uh, we need to, to start a, a guillotine. And it's, it's recommended that you install it along with a virtual environment. And then if we go to install guillotine step, first uh, we create and folders. In this case, I named uh, tutorial Jemmy, Jem, Jem, I, and create the environment activate that environment and install uh, guillotine and, and uh, cucuzer. Okay, then. Okay, the folder, and then we start it. The environment, the virtual environment. Okay, then activated it. Now we can see at the gen uh, in front uh, in terminal that uh, uh, the environment is activated. And first install Guillotino. Okay, and then this. And now uh, in Guillotina we use uh, Postgres and uh, we run a, a Docker container with, pros, with Postgres and all, all configurations. In this case, I changed the default port. Uh, and set the name and choose that the Postgres version. Well, I need to, to download the, the image. Okay. And finally, uh, we create the guillotine application. In this case, I I named Guillotina demo. Uh, 
the description and the the, the license license doesn't doesn't matter and okay in this case uh, and, uh now we can create the the guillotina and then install the guillotine application in the project All of you uh, have installed that guillotine yet? Okay. Uh, well, after uh, run guillotine, we need to change the database. Well, these files we can delete it because we don't use it. It's a default database, no, I think. And here in config YAML, uh, you can see my Visual Studio Code okay or better this. Yeah, yeah, mode. Uh... It looks fine. Okay. Okay. At the first, we need to change the the database and add the allow origin to to do the request uh, against Guillotina uh, in in website from website. Then we can run the guillotine and if we go to website at our first This is the, is the, the guillotine application in localhost uh, 1880. Okay. Go to next step and, and here uh, we'll create the, the React application. We use create Re React app. Okay. Go to this application and add the guillotine uh, guillotine React package. Uh, any idea about this, uh, Ramon? Mm -hmm. I think your authors has not attributes. Yeah, the version of Python is 3.9. Yes. Uh, 3.8. If uh, he uses another version of the guillotine, you know, let me check which one is it. Mike, are, are you using uh, guillotine, uh, development version of guillotine, latest version, master version? Um, no. 
I just, just uh, right right now I just installed it uh, like you have in the tutorial yeah, with, with the in the virtual environment. Yeah. Uh, uh, also. No. Uh, you, you should, we, we did the release on Friday of Guillotina uh, 640. Just make sure that it's uh, less than 640. Just to avoid okay. any problem. I don't think it's quite strange. <coughs> yeah, I don't need a lot of things recently in 3.9 and 3.10 about uh, SyncIO. Um, it's uh, three point uh, six point three fifteen. That's that's cool. Yeah. I mean, the same. Yeah, it's six three fifteen. Yeah. And you are in the virtual land, no? So yeah. Yeah, it's activated, yeah. Super strange. Can you try with 3.8 just to make just not block the, the training and sorry what? Can you try with Python 3.8? Yeah, I can try. Just to make sure because Everybody else is having the same problem. Everybody else is okay. Yeah. Just getting caught up. Right. That that's yeah. It works, no, Ron? Yeah, it works. Yeah, well, yeah, it works. I just I'm trying to get as like they said, get caught up. Maybe it's the Python three nine. No? So for me, running gu Guillotina serve seems to work, but um, local host eighty eighty is just some. Looks kind of like JSON or a dictionary output. Yeah, that's normal. Okay. It's an API. <laughs> Mike, any luck? Just a second. Yeah. Uh. Now it worked. Yeah, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> Well, uh, 
after uh, created the React application, uh, it ran. Here, not a host. Okay, now uh, we have a, a React application. And first of all, we changed the main component uh, in, in, in React application. No, and then we open Ape. Uh, and then we modify it all content with uh, this code in, in GitHub. Okay, uh, now I explain the, the code because first of all, uh, well, uh, in here there are uh, two main components or three, but uh, I think that the most, most uh, are two that are uh, client provider and uh, guillotine component. Guillotina component, uh, it's the main component that Guillotina React uh, provides us to create uh, all uh, application. Uh, it uh, renders all views and uh, manage uh, all components that we see in the, in the page. But to Guillotina needs the Guillotina client. And uh, to provide client to Guillotina, uh, we, we grab the Guillotina component in uh, client provider. All of you uh, knows about uh, context, uh, React, React context, and uh, all of this. Yes? OK. Uh, then uh, we created an layout component to to add a logout uh, button. And then if it's not logged the user, we render the, the login component to, uh, to login to application. <coughs> now in the application, we can see uh, something like, like this. OK. Now, uh, to see the icons, we need to add in index.html uh, that the URL icons, and in this case, it's in public, in the index, and we add it, the icons in the, in the index now. And uh, to see the logo, we copy from uh, GitHub and now we stop the web server. Copy, copy logo and restart the server. And now, yeah, uh, we can see the guillotine logo. All of you see this the same page? Not yet, but I will go there. Well, uh, now uh, we log in as root because by default, Guillotina provides us uh, 
this username and, and this password. We, if, you, if we want, we can change it in the config, on Glutino config, but in this case, it doesn't matter. And then uh, I, I am logged uh, we as a root user. And first of all, we see the database uh, view. Uh, we <coughs> see the Glutino database. In this case, we, we have one. And then inside the database, uh, there are uh, all of containers that inside. In this case, uh, it's empty. And now uh, we create our first container. And finally, we can see the containers view. All of you. Uh, can create the container and all it's okay? Uh, I can't log in. You can't log in. Uh, the need work. Which code uh, says? In login. Uh, as uh, he says, failed to fetch data backend not running. Um, but I started my Docker and I don't know what. Oh, okay. You started Glutino. Uh, yes, but my terminal died. Okay, that explains it. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you restart again, Guillotine, to make sure that everything works? I'm on it. One second. I get a key error secret when I start Gutina. Yeah, but it doesn't matter in this case. No? You can change that uh, the secret in in config, Gutina config. Here. Yeah, but it, it, it says it has a key error, so it doesn't know uh, the, the secret. Is, is this this under the JWT the secret or? Yeah. Um, the login doesn't work. Fail to fetch data backend not running. But the backend is running except the, the trace with the key error secret. Uh, and your guillotine is it's running and says that the. Uh... I had it open. Wait, let me just. I see it... on, on 8080, I see the JSON, yeah. But if I uh, go on port 3000 with the React app, then it says uh, it cannot log in. Did I miss a step to configure there? 
Well, yeah, uh, I have the same problem. Uh, the React application says you that uh, your backend is not running, maybe? Yeah, on the lock and screen. It says it cannot fetch the backend data somehow. And Guillotina is running. Guillotina is running. And the Guillotina logs, uh, what say? On the terminal, it says uh, lock in internal server. Same. On the on the post message, there's a 500 internal server, but no trace after that. The post, the the the, the inter oh, but there is no trace on the terminal on the guillotine. Ah, the trace. I mean, I can put the trace in the. But that's what I mentioned earlier. It's about uh, it doesn't know the secret, uh, the the key secret. I posted it in the, in the chat. Okay. Okay. So that's that's what I get on lock in on the Gutina side. Mm. But the, um, the, the, the it says that the key is there is a problem with the secret. That means that uh, are you sure you the you are running Gutina on the folder Gutina demo? Wait. So I'm in. Like I'm in the Guillotina underline demo, yeah. And inside that, I have another Guillotina demo folder, but it's the folder where I have to set up py and the, the config YAML file. And you're, I... you're running Guillotina with this minus C uh, option. Like, yeah, but wait. Uh, ah. Okay. I'm already in the Gutina folder, so. Yeah, then you should not use the. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I correct this, then I have then it has some other issues, but that's uh, database related. I will fix that. Um, I don't use the Docker container. It was not working for me, but I have Postgres installed, so. Okay. Uh, Janira, uh, do you have the same problem? Mm, yeah, but I guess um, it's uh, for me. It's because of the config. Um, I'm I'm testing something. One okay. second. Can you go right? Okay. Well, it's important that uh, the guillotine runs in in the main folder. If not, if you won't run guillotine inside guillotine folder, then we don't need this. No, and then. In the both in the both case, it's okay. Okay, I'm there. Okay.
Don't wait for me. No, I will catch up. Okay, let's continue. Uh, yeah, okay. Then uh, after created the, our first container, uh, we can see the, the default tabs that Guillotine and React provides us. No? Uh, first of all, we have the, the items. Then uh, we have the add-ons tape. Uh, the add-ons is an application that we can install in, in Guillotino. Registry tab uh, is not implemented, but the idea is that uh, to, to see the Guillotine registry, because uh, Guillotine have a registry, and then uh, we can see all information in in this tab, but in, at this moment is not implemented. Then uh, we have the behaviors tab. Uh, here we can add some behaviors in uh, current object, because in this case, in container, uh, we have an, um, a static behaviors, but uh, we add some dynamic behaviors in, in the current object. Then the permission tabs to modify the permissions of the object. And finally, the, the action tab uh, that we, in this case, can delete, move, or copy the, the current object. By default, uh, Guillotine and React uh, create uh, these types in container, in container type. In the, the other, other types uh, may be different. Uh, now, uh, the important thing that uh, we need to know is the, the traversal, because uh, always uh, we navigate uh, to all objects uh, with traversal, no? and then uh, we set the current path that maps with the current object. In this case, in the first uh, param, we we have the database and, and then uh, container. If in container, um have uh, more objects uh, we can add uh, the id in in the in the path and this uh, we can navigate uh, to all objects in in Guillotino. okay in the fourth step uh, we create uh, our first object and and then uh, we uh, will do some actions uh, with this. First, we create an item, for example. All of you can create it. Then if we go to, to see uh, this object, uh, we can see that the tabs are different uh, to container. Uh, we uh, have an the items tab. It's because an it is an item, and items uh, uh, have an um, child. It's uh, the last uh, object. Then we have the behaviors tab the same, permissions, and, and the actions. In this case, uh, in permissions tab, uh, we can see the Dublin core like a, a static behavior. This is because the, all, of, all items in Guillotina, by default, uh, have uh, this behavior. But uh, we can add uh, some dynamic behaviors like eye attachment, multi-attachment, dynamic fields, or dynamic fields values, if we want. If we create a new object, in this case, a folder, we can see the same uh, that the item, but in this case, we have the, the item tab because it, it is in a folder. Here in the items uh, actions, we can move uh, this object, for example, in the 
in the folder that uh, we have created now. We click in MOV2 and uh, here we uh, set the current uh, path uh, to the object without uh, the database and the container because it's, it's not needed uh, to, set, to set this. And I think the folder is first folder and goes to item, move to. And now the, the object is inside the first folder. <coughs> before this, uh, before uh, this object uh, is uh, one was in, in container and then is in, in folder. We can create an, uh, a copy, and for example, we can choose to container, and now in container uh, there are the, the item and the first folder. We can we see the same name, but it's not the the same object because you can see here that the ID is different. In this case, first item copy and in folder is the, the files item. This action can, can I rename a folder? Yeah, no, rename in the the ID I mean you can change the the title in properties tab. You can change okay for now. The name is first folder. And in container, uh, we can see first folder, but we can change the the, the ID, you know. I can cannot uh, the the ID, but uh, we change the the title. If uh, we uh, want to change the ID, you need to create a copy. Uh, set the new ID that you want, for example, and then deleted the earlier object, for example. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, now uh, we move this object in action tab, but we can do the same in the items list because we can select it, for example, the item now and then we can delete it, move or copy. It's the same in the actions tab, but in this case, uh, we do it in the, in the items list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but you change that the folder. You don't change the ID. Mm. Well, uh, in yeah, in the API. Yeah, right. Okay. Here we explain that the, all these actions, and if you want uh, more um, information about content types, you can visit Glutina Docs, and if you more uh, information about behaviors, it's the same. You can visit the, the guillotine docs in here we explained uh, more uh, this information and these this, uh, these things. Okay now uh, we will add uh, some users in our in our application. First we need to add the uh, users application in guillotine no and then uh, we modify the Glutina config and we add this application. And we need to restart uh, the Glutina server. Just modify the config and then restart the Glutina.
Now I get, uh, I get an error then. So I edit the uh, application and when I restart, then I get a type error, non-type object is not subscribable. Uh, in set root user password equals user password. You can uh, paste the log in chat. Yeah. Can you paste, please. It's the same problem, Mike. The the config punyama it's not it's not okay. Uh, it, are you sure you are loading the config the YAML that we have on the example? Because it um, what here is that there is no uh, what this error says is okay. There is this uh, this entry here uh, fourteen and fifteen. It's not on the config YAML that we are loading. It means that you're not setting any password and that's why it's, it's, it's saying this error. Are you sure you're loading the config.yaml when you're the, the proper one? Yeah, I started, I mean, I have the config.yaml, that's the folder where I'm currently. So I'm in the, in the Guitina, Guitina uh, demo folder inside the tutorial uh, GMI. And there's the config, and I started just with uh, minus C config YAML, uh, which was, I mean, it was working. I just stopped it, uh, changed in the editor. Um, I can just take Isn't out the, the line and uh, start Gitina without the plugin. But now it says, hey, this is strange. I get the same now, yeah, even, yeah. If, even if I removed it. And you make sure that and what's the alien and then or coffee in your mind. And you make sure that you have this uh, this the demo. No, I got open. So what I have is Gutina demo, the contrib catalog, PG, swagger. And the DB users I added earlier. And after that it was not working. But right now I removed it and it's still not working. So that's a bit strange. It, this is just reading the file. Ah, wait, I, uh, I think I did the change earlier, which might be the problem. Yeah, I, I messed up the, the password was not intended. Uh, so the root user and password uh, should not be on the same level. I just didn't uh, see the error before. Just appeared after the restart. So now it's starting. Okay, it's working. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, now in container in the add-on stack. Uh, we will see the guillotine DB users. All of you uh, can see uh, this add-on in this yeah. tab. Yeah, okay. Then uh, we install it. And after this, uh, in the items, we can see the groups and the users folder. Okay. Install with the new user after installing the groups. Okay. You can create a new users and a new group. 
first uh, we created an, a new user. Uh, for example, test password. After that, uh, we do the same with an a group. Okay. In the well, oh, all of you can create it, both objects. Okay. In details group, uh, we can uh, add some roles, Illudina roles, uh, in this group and add some users. The users part now uh, doesn't work because there are some conflict with the API because uh, Guillotina DB users try to uh, simulate or adapt the same API that uh, exists in Plone, but now there are uh, some problems in this case, uh, for in this uh, view, we can't uh, add users to group because there are uh, an error and we uh, we need to solve and but yes we can uh, add roles but now we can't uh, do this uh, we change the title at the same and uh, and this if we go to the users detail in this case we can change the user's password the username the email the name and this we can add it uh, this user to group if you uh, want to add some users in some group, uh, you need to do this in users uh, detail view. And then we added uh, this user to uh, this new group. And then if we want, we change the, the role uh, in users too. All of you can add the training group in the new users. Okay. Okay, now, uh, we log out and try to log in with the new user. We use the username and now uh, we have an error. This is because if you try to log in with an user against uh, the root path in Guillotina, you can't. The uh, users in this case only uh, can log in with the current uh, container, and then uh, this user can't uh, log in uh, against uh, the, the root path in, in Guillotina. To solve this, Okay. Well, in Sai, we explain that the reason no and says that uh, we can't log in uh, against the, the root path in, in Guillotina, but root users, uh, root user uh, can do login, uh, can log in uh, in this context and uh, the container context too. If we go to the next. Uh, so so this is actually a departure from Plone where you know the user can log in and see what they can only see rather and so instead in this one you have to log in knowing your context ahead of time is that correct yes no well it's yes and no because uh, it's like you have different mount points from zodb and you you can log in in different uh, you can log in on different points of the tree so depending on which, uh, which uh, pass plugins or container or clone site, you have different authentication. They have as one ZOOP instance and you have a lot of clones in your ZOOP instance and you can log in. Okay, so, so basically you're saying that they can log in anywhere within a given container, but not a different container, correct? 
Yeah, so each container can has its own authentication mechanism. Right, okay, have its own ACL and authentication mechanism, like OAuth or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. and okay. what, what you are allowed with this GMI, it's to log in, in the, to the root. So you, you log, it's like in Zoop, you log in with the admin user from Zoop, mm -hmm. or you log in onto the container, and then you can log in with a, with a clone site, username, or Tina. Right. Okay, like manage main and all the other rest of that. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's just, this is intended to be similar to this use case. Okay, very good, thank you. So when I try to uh, um, call slash con uh, db slash container, I should be able to log in. Yes, now yes, but you can't uh, see uh, anything because this user uh, have an, I has an, uh, permissions to see and access container in this case. Now um, I cannot really log in. So when I try with my training underlying user, you can log in, but you can't see the container. Now. No, it said failed invalid credentials somehow. I and let, let me try to uh, change the password again just to make sure. Well, now we we try uh, to log in uh, against container. This is, this is something that's also different from Plone itself because when you create a container, it, uh, it does not have access to anybody. So it's the other way around as Plone. No? Uh, the default permission is that you don't have any permission. And if you want somebody to access uh, even the container or any place, you need to give con permissions to- But should out. should the, I mean, that I don't see anything after login, I get, but uh, should the login work? Because right now the login is not working. It says failed invalid credentials. If, if it fails and the endpoint of login, it's connected. So you when you do the login, you will see that it logins onto the root or it logins in DB container. And if it logins in DB container, so it does slash DB slash container slash at login. Uh, ah, no, yeah. Now uh, we do uh, login against root, not the uh, database and container because it is failed. Okay, the, the user interface uh, doesn't see on what context I am and yeah. changes that. You're going to work now with the user. No? Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, now in the, we modify the, the, main con the main component. You can copy all of this code and now we explain it. It says the imports are the same, but you do need to add the use effect import. Uh, the the doc says that the imports are the same, but use effect is not currently imported, and it's in that code. So, if anybody has a problem, you just have to add the import for use effect. Users. Well, one moment. Same imports. Ah, okay, this, this, or use effect. It was use effect for me. Yeah, I, I missed uh, this code in this, I, I fix it then in the documentation. You add uh, use effect in from React. We import user state and use effect. I, I missed this, this import in, in documentation. Now they, they import uh, are, are this. And now, well, there are some letter that it's. Now the, the login page, uh, we can uh, choose the schema, no? By default, uh, we log in against uh, root folder, but now we can log in uh, against container. In the code, 
here we can change uh, that uh, now <clears throat> the client is in a state because we need the current schema in in client no and uh, every change in current schema uh, uh, we set a new a new client with with this schema uh, after login we set uh, we set uh, the current schema in local storage and uh, after logout we remove it and and set to default uh, the schema the component in the component we change it only the login props the component login props to pass the all schemas the, the current schema and to set the now the this this current schema now if we try login with a new user uh, against container we can login but we can't uh, see anything in container because these users, this user hasn't uh, any permissions uh, to see and access a container. All of you uh, can log in with a new user against container. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then to solve this. Uh, log out and log in with the root user. Well, if uh, we uh, log in with the root as a root user against container now, uh, directly uh, we go to the containers view because in this case, uh, the application that knows that database and container and then uh, never goes to database view or containers view because you are logged against container and by the default the the main view is, is, is container it's the difference that login uh, root uh, the root path that we see at the database container and then we see the containers view to do this against uh, login against container and now the path we need cleans and directly we see the the container view uh, to give access uh, to new user uh, we go to permissions tab in container and then uh, here we selected principal roles and said that this group we can choose to do in group or in user no and in this case we uh, give permissions in group and selected that you, this user is reader and guillotine member. The operation is allow. That, that, that means that this user uh, have uh, permissions uh, container and all uh, its uh, childs. If not, if we set allow single only uh, set permissions to the current object. But in this case, uh, we set allow permission and now here we can see that this principal, in this case, the group is guillotina member and guillotina reader. To know uh, which permissions uh, give each, each role, we can see this in guillotina uh, in, in documentation or in yeah, the documentation. No? Security. No. Price. Aquí. 
In here we can see that uh, each role uh, which permissions uh, has. In this case, uh, guillotina member uh, has access content and guillotina reader has uh, access content and bio content. If we set uh, different roles, we can see uh, each permissions in each role in here in, in guillotina docs. Now, I'd like to log in again against container. What? Why not? To the container. I don't save it, this. And now uh, the user uh, can access uh, to container, but only access and bio content. Uh, this user can't uh, edit anything uh, to container because uh, has not permissions. If we try to see the folder, it's the same. We can we can see all information, but but we can't uh, modify it. Uh, anything about uh, this object and in the item it's the same and in the item inside the folder it's the same because these objects uh, are created by uh, you, uh, root user root uh, now uh, we create um, a new permissions to to can uh, give some permissions to access in this application. Because if you want, uh, you can uh, choose. Okay, these users can't uh, access in the Glutina management, but uh, their users uh, can't, no? To do this, uh, we modify the Glutina and create this new file, uh, permissions.py. Uh, we will go to Guillotina, inside Guillotina demo, new file, get permissions.py and copy uh, this code. Here, uh, we create an permissions called access uh, GMEI. It's to access the application, a new role, and set this permission uh, to this role. Finally, we need to modify uh, the init to add this new file in Guillotina. After that, we stop Guillotina services and restart it. Okay. After this, uh, we need to change uh, the auth class to check if the this the this user have uh, I has this permission. No. Now uh, we create uh, an extent about uh, out class uh, in Guillotina React and create this new file in lib folder, for example. And we go to Guillotina React application, new file, lib out.js, and paste the, the code. We save this. And now we can see that first uh, we log in and then after response, if the credentials uh, are valid, check uh, if this user uh, has guillotina demo uh, access uh, permissions to request uh, with this endpoint, can I do 
against containers in this case, no? And uh, the response, if this permission uh, is okay, uh, we log in, but if not, we uh, show an error that invalid credentials. To check this, we come back to web, then we log out, clean path, and signing user. Test container. What can we do? Ah, no, no, yeah. I need to change. Uh, DAOs class in, in the main component, no? Because now, uh, here we set the DAOs class to other class and now we need the new class. And here I think that it explained it. Yeah. Import. And now we can see that we do login okay, we have the token, but when check the permissions against container, no, because we database and you, you can see this or it's better like this. Uh, here uh, in this uh, endpoint, uh, we check the permissions and guillotina response as that it's false and then we can uh, log in uh, with this user, no? All of you are in the same point. Well, for some reason, my training user is still working, but I didn't log out. You are overwrite the out class? Yeah. And restart the guillotine server after added the permissions? Yeah. And you can uh, log in. I hadn't logged out, so I was expecting that, that it would cause a problem. But I guess if I, I'll, I'll try log out. Login is correct, but well, the all. Uh, the both requests the requests are, are correct, but in the second, the permission uh, set false. If, yeah, it won't let me log back in. No, login doesn't work anymore. I was still logged in, but uh, after I closed the window, I cannot log in again. Okay, now it's correct, no? It's not working, no. Ah, it's not logging. I cannot log in, yeah. So, uh, my, um, so you're trying to log in with a training user on DB container? Yes. And the the request, what it's what does it say? It says invalid credentials. It says so the post goes to db log uh, container login. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
right? The post looks okay. The answer is the token. Yeah, yeah. So then, then, then. Yeah, then it uh, does the uh, can I do permissions blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and then preview. And it says it says uh, Guitina demo access GMI false. Okay, it's correct. It's correct because uh, this uh, this user this user hasn't uh, this permission yet. Now we can uh, give. Uh, this permission in the in this user or in this group. Mm -hmm. Okay, now uh, at this point you can only log in as uh, root users and you need to add the the user that you want to have access in permissions tab. No, and then yeah. login with user, I user with root. And in permissions tab, we change the principal roles in the group and set uh, guillotine demo uh, GMI user and set allow operation and save it. And now this group uh, has three roles. Now, if uh, log out and try again with the user, we can uh, log in. Now it works. No. No? No, not yet for me. In so I, have, I have the three roles, the Gitina demo, GMI user, the member, and the reader with setting allow for the training minus group. Yeah. And, and, and then the, yeah. the user should be in that group. Let me check that. Uh, it didn't save the group membership. Now it works. Okay. But I get a 404 after login. Yeah, you need to remove the URL. Just remove the, the, yeah, the uh, stream on the URL. Yeah, to, to solve this, uh, when log out, we can uh, reset. Uh, the you are the query params and yeah. we can use uh, this function in use location hook. We added uh, use location hook and use reset function, and then in logout we can uh, clean uh, path uh, query param and uh, tab query param. And now if uh, we add uh, this configuration in, for example, in root user, now we can log out, no, the path is clean. What happened, reset? What is wrong? That is
application application I don't know what happened. No. I think that in this, log out, remove. I think it's in there. Ah, remove, reset. The function is remove, not reset path. Why not? Why not clean the path? Because I've logged. Well, I think change that. Both this for six state. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, this function usually cleans the path, but now I don't know uh, why not it why not work. Uh, not not so important right now. Well, after uh, after training, uh, I review this and update the the docs. Okay, uh, step six. At the bottom of step six, where you're, where we're doing the permission right there, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. Uh, what do I choose for select permissions? The same one, the one we created. Uh, what, what I mean? Can you repeat them, please? Yeah, can you repeat, please? Where you're adding the permission, uh, I'm not clear if I'm doing it right. So you do uh, add per, under add permissions on the right column, you do select type role permissions and then select role guillotine demo.gmi user. That's what we added, right? Is that, yeah, which one do you pick for that? Principal role. Uh, principal roles. Yeah, on guillotine we, we support the three sides of the triangle and permissions, no? Use principal roles, roles permission, permission principle. So, uh, but what makes sense, what makes mostly sense normally is principal roles. That is one principle, you assign one role to one principal, or even if it's a group or if it's a, a user. Okay. Yeah, in this case, you can uh, set directly permissions, but now we use the, the roles. Then did you use the user or the group? Uh, that's a matter. I use the group, but okay. if you use the user, it's the same. And the operation should be allow. Allow, yeah. Because if you if not uh, if you set allow single only, uh, you set permissions in current object. In this case, container, and you can't access or view the the content inside container, for example. Okay, so I initially accidentally added it as a role permission. How is there a way to delete that? Doesn't look like it. As a an allow permission, yeah, you can you can unset. No, the um, see on the left side at the top where it says role permissions. Role permissions. On the left. Uh, at the top. Yeah. yeah, I accidentally added one there at first. Mm -hmm. okay. So, is there a way to get rid of that? Yeah, so if you on row permissions, you choose whatever the same configuration you choose. Oh, uh, okay. 
and then just say the operation. Okay, thank you. Okay, now uh, we create the uh, own content type. By default, uh, Guillotina give us item and, and folder and container. But now uh, we created uh, own content type to to view uh, to see more uh, features in Guillotina React. Then we go to Guillotina demo, new file content. Dot by and paste the code. And here uh, we have uh, some properties in this type. Uh, a text field that is an uh, a text, uh, text rich uh, text field that is the same, but the difference that is uh, one half uh, has the uh, widget in this case rich text and the the other no, and one is required, and the the second is not required. Number field, uh, a choice field in this case uh, we can choose plum, guillotina or other, a Boolean field, and a list, that the time and uh, that the field, no. Then uh, when we define the content type, we added uh, the doubling core and multi-attachment behaviors. To apply this content, we need to set this in include me files. modify the function and restart the guillotine service. Now, if we, well, uh, all of you, it's okay. Any problems? No? Okay. Now in the, in the container, uh, we need to refresh uh, with cache. And then if we try to add uh, a new object, uh, we can see uh, a demo type. If we try to add a uh, new object, uh, we can't. Uh, we can't uh, because uh, this object needs uh, some fields uh, are required. For example, if you see here, we can see that we need text field and we need uh, choice field. No, and by default, Guillotina React, uh, the default form only asks. Uh, ID and the uh, and the title. To solve this, Guillotine React uh, provides us an uh, another form that called uh, required files form. To overwrite. In Glutina React, we can overwrite uh, all forms for each content type. To do this, uh, we add a registry uh, in Guillotina component. This registry is, uh, is different to uh, Guillotina registry. This is only to overwrite uh, some components in each content type uh, in a React application. Then we import this form my component and create a registry object. Uh, 
after that, we need to pass uh, this registry object to guillotine a component as a drop. And now refresh the page and it's try to create a new demo uh, type. Uh, we can see the text field, the choose field, and the title and the UID uh, <coughs> by default because uh, Guillotina uh, always provides us a uh, JSON schema definition for each content type. No? And then we catch uh, this JSON schema and mapping uh, all required fields to create this form. But if you want, you can uh, create a new form to render in this case. If uh, this form, uh, you can change it, uh, you can create uh, own form for each content type that you, you have in Guillotina. Then if try to create this object, uh, and add uh, some text and choose one field, we can create the object. Are you logged in as root at this point or training user? Uh, as root because the training user uh, has an ad permission to do this with the uh, training user you you, uh, you need to give uh, guillotine ad permission just after the last permissions we did for training user my training user just has 404 for after login you need to remove the query screen it's what uh we just said that the path in yeah. the query param. Okay. Because ah. uh, the path uh, depends if you log in uh, container or root uh, saves the the whole path, the current object, and depends okay. that you need to change. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now we are uh, going to see that the, this demo uh, content view <coughs> and we see the same that uh, on a folder uh, content type uh, because this object uh, is uh, in here that the folder and uh, can uh, have another items inside. Then uh, here uh, we can add uh, some objects items, folders, or another demo types. And in properties tab, now we can see uh, all properties that this object has. No? Uh, in text field, by default, uh, we see an a text area. In a rich text field, uh, the same, because it's an, uh, a text in a guillotine. The number field, by default, is an uh, input number. Uh, choice field is an select. Uh, Boolean is a checkbox. And list field, this we can add all uh, items inside and we save this as a list. No? To save uh, this value, we need to uh, uh, under the, the, I don't know that, uh, the, I know, uh, ah, okay. Uh, well, you, we need to see uh, these objects this, because if you uh, add this, uh, this value and save, you don't save the content inside the input. You save only the content that uh, appears above the, the input, no? And then we save only C3 and this, this can add. Now we can see this because we need to add it uh, above the, the input. Then in data time field, we render the default uh, data field in the browser. I think that 
this is not words in Safari because Safari, I think that not have, I don't, don't has the default uh, input at the time, I think. And in date files, it's the same that without that, no, we, only that, the date. Uh, like the form in, in properties tab, uh, Guillotina React renders the input uh, according to the JSON schema. If JSON schema says this input is in a text, we render a, a, a text area. If uh, Guillotina, I, uh, yeah, if Guillotina schema says that this is a number uh, type, we render a, an input, uh, a number input type. And then uh, all of them. We can override it, uh, this, and uh, then we will see. Uh, after that, uh, we will override all of this view because by default, Guillotine React provides us this view, but we can uh, modify it for each content type, uh, the current view. No? Then uh, in the step eight, we can create a demo type uh, file inside the views folder in a React application. Here, uh, in this view, we define the items that we can see in the in the content uh, view: items, properties, behaviors, permissions, and actions. And then we define which permissions the user needs to see uh, this stuff. For example, to see items and properties, only needs the Guillotina view content, but to see behaviors uh, tab, we need modify content and to see the permissions, we need uh, Guillotina C permissions. Now to override the default uh, bio, uh, which uh, with this content type, we do the same that uh, we did with the uh, forms. First, uh, Import the view and add views uh, property in the registry object and in demo type set now uh, our uh, our view. Now uh, we add a new uh, tab in this view and we come back to demo type uh, .js. And in the tabs, we added a custom tab. In this case, it's an, a simple React component that only says this is a custom tab. And in permissions, we said that the user need, uh, needs uh, Guillotina view content. And now if we refresh the, the application, we can see the custom tab. Yes. Okay, if we want, in this case, we can delete uh, one of them, these tabs, or, or add it uh, more. Okay, now uh, we modified the columns in uh, items list 
because we can modify it for each content type too. Uh, we will do the same than in the bio component and create a demo type that JS uh, file in components uh, column, for example. Here only we added the, the path column. And now uh, to override this, we need to do the same uh, than the forms and bios. And we added the items column property in registry and set to demo type the new component. And now in the items list, we can see the, the path column. Okay, you see the new column. Okay. Now we explain the properties fields and how uh, to override the edit component and render a field component for each uh, for each field. No. Guillotine React uh, when renders the properties uh, use a component that, co uh, that um, is a <coughs> edit component. Uh, this component uh, has uh, two main components. That one uh, is uh, the handler to render the when it's in edit mode, and then the, the other is when it's a uh, BO mode, that like this. No? Now we can see the, the render component and then now we can see the, the edit component. To overwrite this, we create the edit component, component, and then here, new file, fields, uh, yes, and copy uh, this, this code. This is the default edit component. If you don't uh, want to override it, uh, this code is at the default uh, edit component. In this case, if widget is uh, text area or rich text, we render the text area component. If in the schema, the property type is Boolean, uh, we render the, the checkbox. In the, schema, in the schema type uh, is array, uh, we render the input list. If widget is a file, we render the file upload. If the widget is in a select, we render the select component. And finally, if not, we uh, can check the type to render the default input, but we modify the, the input type, no? In, uh, if the type is integer, uh, we render the input uh, number type notice date and if the time is at the time local and finally by default is the input type uh, text okay now uh, we modify when uh, we render uh, the widget uh, when it's a text area or uh, rich text to do this, first uh, we install the this package, the MC 
stop the React server, uh, web server. Well, I think that we need to use the yarn because by default, okay, they can use yarn. Okay. Then we start the server. And now we create uh, the rich text uh, component. Here is an, uh, a simple component that we use uh, this library to create a, a rich text. After uh, create the component, we modify the edit component and now we import rich text component and change that when the widget uh, is text area or rich text instead of render text area now we render our component no we save the change And finally, we need to overwrite in registry. Import edit component, and then we add these components in registry to set the now the new edit component is our uh, edit component. Now in the properties tab, if uh, you try to edit text field or rich text field, you can see the rich text component. Just to note the installing of the tiny MC is taking quite long. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I started it way earlier and it just finished. always are the, are the same. No, we uh, override it, the components in registry and we define for each content type that component that uh, we want to render. In this case, but uh, the edit component is uh, used uh, by all uh, content types because uh, only needs a JSON schema for each, for each content type. And then you can create uh, all widgets and uh, all, all change the input uh, depends on the, the, the content type interface including.
you have that uh, in the same mic. I have to turn him to you. Then, well, uh, now uh, we already the uh, edit component, but not uh, uh, any change in render component. No one uh, in properties tab, we can see that we see the HTML and not the parse set uh, HTML. Uh, to change this, uh, we create the render field component to overwrite uh, this, this component in, in render mode. Now, fields, create no file. Paste that code and see uh, if it's the same idea in the edit component, but uh, we change uh, the widget uh, depends the JSON schema. In this case, we, all, we change that when widget is text area or widget is uh, rich text, uh we render uh, render rich text that only pass that the uh, XML value in in this div and to override it we modify the component in registry and import this And now we can see the text. No, and if we change, for example, to bold or underline it. We can see the, the parsed text. Then uh, in properties tab, uh, we can uh, add more components that in this case uh, is panels and buttons. And uh, here we only create an, a simple example, but uh, it's an, a component that allows us to add uh, extra buttons in properties tab or extra info uh, in this tab too, no? And then, uh, in the main component, we add these uh, two components, that buttons component and panels component, for example, here, doesn't matter. And then in, in the registry, we add this component in properties and demo type content type. And set here we can render uh, all uh, different components. And if we refresh the page, we can see here we render the buttons component, and between the properties and behaviors, we can uh, render the the info panels uh, components. These components, uh, by default, uh, can uh, receive the context as a prompt. If we, we want uh, to do uh, something with the, the context, these components uh, receive the context as a prompt. And here, we can receive context and then, for example, we render, ah, I think. Maybe we, we can do this in different way. Uh, 
and then uh, we can overwrite the the view with a, a conquerly object. No, uh, here we can overwrite the views for all objects in demo content type, but if we want, we can overwrite it this to a unique uh, object to use uh, the path in registry. And then, for example, here we create an object that called uh, first object. And here in uh, database container first object, we can see the item view because uh, we override it in in registry in the concurrently path. No? And in this path, for one object, we can uh, override uh, its view. And that is all uh, about uh, properties. But uh, in the properties tab, uh, we have uh, the behaviors. And then uh, by default, uh, Guillotina React uh, provides us uh, a component to Dublin Core and multi attachment and uh, attachment behaviors. But if you create a new behavior or, for example, use the guillotine country image that provides it uh, for us the multi image attachment, uh, we can uh, add it a new component to render and to manage uh, this behavior. No? Now, uh, in guillotine, we add the, this application, it's on the guillotine that country that image. in config file. Then in the content type, we define that this type uh, has this uh, behavior to And finally, we need the pillow to create the the images because this behavior uh, allows us to upload an image and then uh, we resize this image in different in different size. After install the pillow, uh, we restart the guillotine. And then these uh, objects uh, has uh, this new behavior. But now in Guillotine React, uh, we don't, uh, uh, well, we haven't uh, any component to render and to manage uh, this behavior. But we will create uh, it. Okay, all of you uh, 
Kaspi lawan Reset The New Country. Okay. Well, uh, now we created that uh, the component in components uh, behavior folder, for example. And copy the code. Here, uh, we do all, all things that we need to manage uh, this data. For example, the blood file function that create the image and uh, all sized image depends that the, the size that uh, define it in guillotina. If you uh, go to guillotina and and see the, the default sizes that are set in uh, this interface. Then we can delete uh, these files. Well, in this case, that's this, this image. And then finally, uh, we uh, render the component with the editable field. We set the current uh, behavior to to get the, the objects. And we said that uh, we can't uh, modify it because only we can uh, upload image or delete it uh, then. Finally, we have the, the input that allows us to, to upload uh, this image. To set uh, to guillotine React uh, that knows um the component uh we modify the registry and set in the behaviors in guillotina that country that image uh dot behaviors the dot uh multi-image attachment uh now will render the new component that now we have created import this component to know this this key you need to go, go to guillotina and in the content set and get the same name uh, in guillotine interface and in guillotine react to set the, the component. And finally, in the demo type uh, object at the bottom, we can see the new behavior and if uh, we want first image example this and upload and then we upload the first image and then we created uh, all uh, sizes for uh, this image and now we can open the image or download or delete it i get an invalid prop value when I try to upload something. You type in a key. Okay. I think that uh, we need to uh, install the add-on in container. In Guillotina image field, we need to install the this add-on. Now you 
you can't upload the image? No, not yet. But I think there's another issue. The, the patch gets a 404. It tries to do a patch on DB container. Hello, hello is the, the object I created and add upload images. Uh, you said the key. Um, where? In the behavior in multi dashman you need to see the key. Second image, for example. And then choose the file. Ah. Okay. Now it's working. With error, uh, stage guillotina. With Jack the DP code, for example. Sorry? Uh, with uh, error. Uh, no, I don't get an error right now. Uh, now it's working with the with the key. I missed I missed to input the key. Okay. Um. With, with add-on activated and uh, the key works. Okay. Well, uh, now we can see all uh, components that we can overwrite it uh, by each content type uh, in, in Guillotine React now. If you have... Uh, more content types, you can define uh, all B or all tabs and all components. You can modify the edit component to modify the, the properties. Uh, you can override it uh, an individual object, no? Uh, and it's these are all of uh, components that uh, we can uh, override it. And with this, uh, we can uh, build uh, any application to manage uh, guillotine data. data. But now, uh, finally, we can see uh, some integrations uh, to use uh, this uh, to Guillotina directly, or for example, use uh, without uh, Guillotina, no? Because uh, the client that we uh, set in this provider, uh, we can use uh, to, to connect uh, to Guillotina, and then uh, we want to uh, render uh, uh, a lot of pages. For example, like uh, in first data, uh, we render the, some custom lists because they need this list uh, to manage their data. No? And uh, to, thanks to Guillotina client, we can build uh, these pages. Guillotina data uh, provides us to get, uh, to do the gets, post, patch, deletes, and some actions uh, against uh, Guillotina. And uh, finally, we can integrate uh, this application uh, inside the, the Guillotina service. Because now we have the Guillotina service for uh, each side, and now the React uh, application uh, in the, the other side. No? But Guillotina uh, allows us to render uh, JavaScript applications. And to do this, uh, we need to modify the package.json to set the new home page. After that, we create the React application build. And 
And finally, we use this build and copy to a guillotine application, for example, in a, a static folder. Now we have uh, all build files and modify the config, the guillotine config to set. Now in, man in plus manage path, we render that the index uh, that XML that, uh, that is in a static uh, slash build folder. Restart the guillotine. And now in guillotine service, we can render that uh, the guillotine react. And in uh, one service, we have guillotine and have guillotine react to manage the, the data uh, in, this, in this application. And now if we try login, it's the same that we see in the website application, but now uh, it's Guillotina that uh, renders the, the web application. you can see uh, the configuration in this, in the last step. And uh, for me, that it's all. Uh, do you have any question about Guillotina React or, or Guillotina? I think that everybody is sleeping. <laughs> No, not really. <laughs> this is quite a lot of information <laughs> to take in. But I mean, this is really good, though. I mean, this is this is excellent. This is worth the price of admission. Great, it's uh, Roger did an amazing work with this in React, and all the documentation is quite. If you see any bug, just feel free to do for requests or an issue um it's the first time that we we push this this framework onto the on the clone uh, the clone conference because we've been we've been using internally for a lot of projects and other companies around they are also using it. 
So I think that it may, it's a really useful tool for building front ends for managing information on top of Bigotina. And he's the main author, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> any any kind of question, he will be super. Uh, do, do you do you see this uh, this front end that you've made uh, something? that uh, the guillotine of people would make as a default or, or, or kind of integrate into guillotine on a more permanent basis? We, we, from the guillotine side, I can tell you that we are going to remove executioner. That is the out of the box UI that we have for managing guillotine that was written by Eric Brichot in Angular. Uh, we will include guillotine React as the, at the end, Right, right, right now it's also good on the, on the if you do pip install guillotine you have a, a vanilla insta, uh, version of guillotine react so you can use it but it's more intended for people to build product uh, projects with uh, with it as a framework uh, instead of an out of the box guillotine is not trying to replace plone no it's 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 a it's a backend uh, and this is more a zmi or Guillotina than anything else. But are you building your project? I mean, this is like the back end, right? You you also have some front end parts, like the real face of, of an app. Uh, do you build that in one app, like like having both together built in React and once is the, the, the back end views and once is the front end views? So? Nowadays, all the projects that we build, uh, the client always requires kind of strange things on the front end, server side rendering, super strange things. So uh, all the projects has Next.js front ends uh, built with a Guillotina client that you see here or with uh, some derivatives from this Guillotina client. But uh, the, the, the final application or the mobile application or the desktop application, whatever you want to build for, for the client, uh, that uh, interface is normally using the same AP, the same libraries that you're seeing here, but not the UI. The UI is more for the back office for, for internal. It's like the Django admin interface for easy to manage. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's this. What I was looking for, at least trying to ask, is really is more of a front end to make it easier for developers to go in and, and flesh out an application and tweak some data rather than using Postman. That's that's what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a good description also. We're so, using production. And Vinis, who's a wine company, uses that for managing all the stock internally, for example, and for managing uh, all the that back office of the company. But yeah. So a bit uh, an alternative for things like uh, fast API, what they're doing in the in the user interface, for example. But you you are more you are more in in the build build. Uh, Backend yourself uh, the single pieces, so it's more customized, a bit more work up front. Yeah, and it's traversal. No, the, the main difference that we have with these guys is that we have a traversal security model. That if you have use fast API, you need to build that on your own. No, it's hmm. uh, it's. I think nowadays to it's this nearly the same. Or it's a sync IO or everything. It's, one has out of the box uh, objects with Zoop interface and security with traversal, and the other has Pydantic in a SQL based uh, models. You, you depends on the project, but I think that it, it's complementary. Yeah, I, I'm not speaking about the the backend part, more about the maybe the use case and the experience for for people. Who are mainly looking for a backend for the front end they want to put on top, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, both are super interesting to build CMSs, but if you want to build anything else, you know, any kind of application that it's not purely a CMS or fulfills exactly the needs of of uh, the CMS side, you need mm -hmm. to back up, even if it's in a commerce or anything. I mean, I, it, it looks in, interesting uh, uh, and with 
Gitina itself, I, I already um, made a small project, uh, but for me, the JavaScript part is more swelled, not, uh, not React. React is still for me like, like Greek, <laughs> reading Greek. <laughs> It's it's just not uh, not not my my flavor. <laughs> it it feels weird for me. But uh, yeah, I guess the uh, um, the most important part is the the layer also to to look into it. Like your automa uh, automatic schema interpretation and things like that. So, um, I would have to rebuild and and so. Yeah. 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 The 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 React. I, I'm not a React fan at all. I can tell you, I don't, yeah. I don't like React, and, and he knows that. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> saying, yeah. Ramon prefers uh, Angular. I, I prefer React. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's let's meet in the middle. Let's let's go swell. <laughs> I I really uh, I I must say I, I just played a bit with small stuff, like also integrated in existing uh, systems, like in Blown. Uh, and I built a small, I'm still on it, but uh, I built a small time tracker app, uh, uh, basically for Odoo, but the backend is Gitina, uh, which speaks then to the, uh, to the other system. Um, and there I use, uh, Svelte and it, but this is like basic Svelte. It's not the Svelte kit, uh, which they have now with all the nice Shishi. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, I must say, I really like their approach and their mindset, uh, that's that's more my style, but yeah, it cannot have everything. Full of uh, front end frameworks, languages, and everything is well. Yeah. It's crazy, uh, but yeah, definitely. Uh, what what I can say about good about React is that I see a really good time to delivery and an easy uh, hiring uh, path. No? For for getting uh, so from the from the business point of view, yeah, there, it's much easier to find React developers than anything else nowadays. No, uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it, it it probably depends. I mean, uh, at the end, uh, if you want to get uh, developers, you have to give them fun, right? Uh, <laughs> So if they if they have more fun uh, with, with other tools, I mean, the approach, I think, is not that much different. If you compare Vue.js uh, uh, with React, for example, the mindset, I think, is basically the same. It's just uh, a bit different how you build it. Uh, and Svelte makes, takes this, for me, the, uh, to the next step, but also has some, uh, some important things that, uh, in their mind, which which uh, the rest of the JavaScript uh, framework don't care. Like, like it has to work without JavaScript enabled in a browser, for example, uh, building apps like this. Uh, turn off JavaScript and, and open uh, uh, an open... Browser, this looks like mid-60s, like no? <laughs> no, you can, you can really build that and it has even advantages. Why do you want to throw five kilo... Uh, a kilogram of uh, J JS to the browser and then let the browser work. <laughs> um, I mean, it's 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 possible. Uh, uh, I don't say uh, that that you have in any case the best experience, but uh, to have a simple form, for example, um, I mean the the example from SwellKit, for example, they they show that it's possible. Uh, you can build a form like a to do a list, for example. Uh, and it works even on the client side without JavaScript because they have a fallback for that. Uh, so you you basically, I mean, you, a form, uh, you submitting a form to the backend, the backend does something with it. This should still work. It's still HTTP, it's still a HTML, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, but it's interesting. It, it's front end, it's always interesting. It's not like backend that it's so boring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> boring doesn't have to be a bad thing no? <laughs> I didn't say bad I said boring so uh, everybody else any other question Anthony did you enjoy it yeah this was great thank you uh, it's a really cool tool I can't wait to to get to, to use it for something but the training was also really great thank you guys yes thank you gracias <laughs> the rest the rest <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I recommend the, the talks from tomorrow of how guillotine react, where I'm with guillotine, and that we are going to do on the conference, the second track, and how to see you there. Do we, do you know what uh, Eric uh, was working on? He also had yeah. something, right? Yeah, but he's 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 working on on uh, a side kind of approach, but we are all connected, so that's. That's super good. Uh, that sounds I, really interesting. Yeah, yeah I, I really like the, that, that guillotine is getting so much uh, things no, on top of it. And it's super interesting. <laughs> Everything is just, it's a plus one. No? So, yeah. yeah. What I really like on uh, guillotine is uh, the flexibility with the behaviors. Uh, I mean, it goes some steps ahead of uh, a clone, for example. Um, you, you cannot do the same thing uh, um, on the back end there. Right. That, yeah. that gives you some power. I'm making a robot for legal research, and I really was looking for a front end for the back end. That's really what I was looking at. Cool. Cool. Thank you so much, guys. Um, nice. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Gustavo é o final. Uh...